Okay, now we have come to video number two. Video number two talk about Fisher effect theory, FE theory and international Fisher effect theory. Okay, let's start with Fisher effect theory, FE theory, which has been developed by Irving Fisher. Alright, according to Irving Fisher, okay, the nominal interest rate in each country should be equal to invested to the investor's real rate of return plus the expected rate of inflation. Uh, so that is the theory that first developed by Irving Fisher, okay, the first parity theory. Okay, according to him, nominal interest rate I, okay, equals to investors' real interest rate R plus expected inflation rate. Apa ke benda semuanya? It's okay. Alright, I'll give you one example, then you will understand. So, to understand the FE theory, okay, let's do this. Suppose you borrow money from your sister, 100 ringgit. And she charges you 10% on the borrowed money for a year of borrowing. Yes, they betul-betul charge you 10%. Maybe your sister is a finance student or maybe she works in banking sector. So, she charges you with 10% interest. Okay? Alright. So, you agreed. Finally, after one year, what she will get from you is 110 ringgit. Why? Because uh, 100 ringgit plus the 10 ringgit which is the 10% interest okay so dia dapatlah 110 nampak macam dia untung 10 ringgit kan okay let's say after one year inflation also increased by 10% ha inflation increased by 10% as well inflasi saja pun dah 10% okay so kalau tahun lepas your sister can buy her cosmetic at 10 ringgit but due to the inflation hari ni after one year because of the increase in the inflation rate she needs to pay 110 ringgit now to buy her cosmetic okay so nampak gaya the borrowing earns her nothing alright borrowing yang dia bagi dekat you tu alright pinjaman yang dia bagi dekat you tu they charge you 10% you get she get 110 tu Give her nothing in return because she has to compensate with the uh, inflation yang berlaku. Therefore, in order for her to gain her real return, she must charge a nominal interest rate, I which is R plus, I besar, R is real interest rate plus the inflation. Jadi, dalam kes ni, kita ambil contoh eh. Dia dah katakan her real rate, real interest rate now is 5%. Considering the expected inflation of 10%, sepatutnya dia kena charge lebih daripada 10% in order for her to gain something from the borrowing that uh, you made from her. Okay, uh, so sekarang ni kalau kita ambil kira R, uh, real interest rate is 5%, inflation premium or expected inflation is 10%, alright, she should, she should charge you actually 15%. Uh, barulah berbaloi dia bagi pinjam duit kat you. Okay. Alright, so to understand further, let's take a look at another example. Okay, this one, let's say given to you two countries, two countries, Malaysia and Singapore, this is the nominal interest rate. Okay, nominal interest rate adalah interest rate comprises of real interest rate plus inflation rate, expected inflation rate. Okay, Malaysia 10%, Singapore 15%. So, which one has lower in nominal interest rate? Malaysia lah. Okay, the expected inflation in Malaysia is 7%. While the expected inflation in Singapore is 12%. So, given to you the spot rate today, okay, ringgit per Singapore dollar and one year forward rate, 2 ringgit uh, and 88,405 cent per Singapore dollar. Okay, according to FE theory, okay, nominal interest rate is comprises of real interest rate plus inflation. So, for Malaysia, berapa dia punya real interest rate? Senang cerita, kita ambil nominal interest rate minus the inflation dapatlah real rate of interest. Real rate of interest ni kalau you plus balik dengan inflation 7%, dapatlah balik nominal interest rate 10%. Okay? Ha, okay. This is to look for the real rate of interest in Malaysia. In Singapore pula, okay, berapa nominal interest rate dia? 15% here. The inflation premium is 12%, meaning to say the real interest rate for investors, alright, in Singapore or yeah, investors, traders in Singapore would be 3%. Sama eh, Malaysia dengan 
Singapore punya real rate of return assumption dia dalam kes ni adalah sama because according to the law or according to the parity condition okay the result implies that both countries should have the same real rate of return they kata should have the same real rate of return but in reality the real rate of interest may not be the same may not be at equilibrium kalau sama 3% 3% real interest rate kita boleh kata the real interest rate for these two country is at equilibrium ha, tapi most of the time dia tak jadi macam tu ok let's go back to the parity condition if there is no government intervention government tak campur tangan tak ada masalah uh, ekonomi dan sebagainya the real rate of interest katakan static tak ada COVID-19 ke apa for these two country nothing change on the real rate of interest for these two country we can say that the difference in nominal interest rate of these two country will approximately equal to anticipated inflation rate differential of both country as well apa maksud dia saya tengok eh ini adalah nominal interest rate this one is home malaysia punya interest this one ini adalah uh, 15% nominal interest rate for uh, singapore so the difference uh, between these two nominal interest rate equals to negative 5% dalam masa yang sama kalau according to parity condition the difference in the inflation rate of these two country pun sepatutnya sama dengan uh, the difference of nominal interest rate between Malaysia and Singapore. Ini nominal punya tau ni. Alright, this one is nominal interest rate. Where is my cursor? Okay. Alright. Okay, nominal Malaysia tolak nominal Singapore dapat negatif 5. Kalau ambil inflation Malaysia minus inflation Singapore also you will get negatif 5. Kalau according to parity condition patutnya sama. Okay. Alright. The differential between these two interest rate. Okay. Fisher also state that the currency with higher inflation, kalaulah sebuah negara tu, the other inflation rate higher than the other country, so the interest rate will be higher. Ha, of course lah. Sebab apa anak-anak, component of I ni ke mana? Component of dominant interest rate adalah real plus inflation. Okay. Kalaulah inflation rate untuk satu negara tu lebih tinggi daripada negara lain, of course dia punya dominant rate also will be higher. Because... I kecil ni bergantung pada I besar. Kalau I besar meningkat, I kecil ni pun mening, meningkat. Okay? Alright. Tak apa. Okay, kalau boleh dapat the gist tu pun dah okay lah. Okay? At any point of time, normally real interest rate of one country is actually bigger or higher than the real interest rate of another country. Kalau keadaan ni berlaku, sama ada lebih besar ke lebih kecil ke, there will be disequilibrium. And therefore, um, there exist capital flow from lower expected real rate of return to those of higher expected real rate of return. Senang cerita macam ni. Let's say real rate of Malaysia, uh, return in Malaysia dah meningkat. Tadi dua-dua sama 3%, sekarang Malaysia punya 5%, Singapore punya real rate of return is 3%. Therefore, investor will start moving to Malaysia, bukanlah pindah, maksudnya start investing in Malaysia rather than investing in Singapore because pulangan in Malaysia will be higher. Ha, see? Tapi kalau katakan parity condition tu berlaku, maksudnya Malaysia still kekal at 3%, Singapore also have real rate of return of 3%. What happen? There is this equilibrium in real interest rate. Jadi, Tak adalah orang boleh pergi pinjam kat negara yang rendah interest dia, pergi labur kat negara yang in, tinggi interest dia. Ha, okay. Arbitraging tak berlaku. Alright, if the parity condition prevail. Okay, but most of the time selalunya this equilibrium yang berlaku. So that is the first part of it which is in uh, Fisher effect theory. Now we will move to international Fisher effect theory. Okay? Uh, IFE. We will do IFE in video in our next video, okay? Because uh, the second video is long enough. Okay, see you in our third video.